This is something that's been pissing me off a little bit lately and you've probably seen this if you've been searching up Amazon or how to make money online or how to start an online business. You've probably seen these ads where there's some guru coming at you with a Lamborghini in the background. He's probably standing around a really expensive mansion or some sort of penthouse um, and he's telling you how easy it is to make money on Amazon and he's also insinuating or implying that all of his wealth and those expensive flashy things that you see in the background, they came from his Amazon business. Uh, his or her, and normally that's not the case. I'm gonna give you an inside look in this video into what it really looks like to sell on Amazon. I'm gonna show you an income report for the last 12 months for my Amazon business. Um, I'm not just gonna give you the top line numbers. I know revenue, you know, is it sounds great, it's a really big number, but you know, even if, even if you're making millions of dollars, what's important is how much money you actually take home at the end of the day. So I'm gonna break all of that down for you. I'm not gonna leave anything behind. I'm not gonna leave any stone unturned. You're gonna see top line revenue, expenses, how much I actually have to pay back to Amazon, um, marketing costs, PPC, all the way down to overhead expenses. And I'm gonna show you how much I actually took home from my Amazon business at the end of the day, again, over the last year or so. And then being the Amazon guru that doesn't believe in BSing people, I'm gonna show you what I made from sell, uh, teaching people how to sell on Amazon as well. So that's gonna be YouTube, that's gonna be my other sources of income through this channel and selling courses. So I hope this is a little bit of a stand or maybe just basically a stand for transparency because I think there's a big lack of it in the space um, at the moment. I don't, I don't believe that BSing people is good and my pet peeve recently has definitely been where you'll hear this and it'll be like, hey guys, look at how I started from nothing. I was broke and then in three months I became a millionaire. And maybe that person, maybe they had an Amazon business, maybe they sold a product on Amazon. But the fact is that <laughs> it'll always be, I started with Amazon and then online business made me successful and the online business is normally the course business. I'm gonna show you that it doesn't always have to be that case. You can be very successful with Amazon if you do things right. Anyway, let's get into the video, but make sure if you do appreciate this transparency and you do appreciate having somebody that's not BSing you, um, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. Do give the video a like as well if you do find this valuable. Anyway, let's talk about my income, how much I brought in from Amazon. So I sell across marketplaces, by the way, I sell in Europe, UK, and the US as well. Um, first one was Amazon Europe, so that's Germany, that's France, that's Italy and Spain. None of these marketplaces, in my opinion, have too much potential except for Germany. I definitely like Germany, but uh, apart from Germany, the rest of those European marketplaces probably won't see this going up too much in the next um, 12 or so months. Amazon UK is a different story. I am really bullish on Amazon in the UK. Over the last 12 months, we've done that's around about 230,000 pounds maybe in just in the UK and that's gonna go up significantly. We actually see this potentially minimum doubling over the next 12 months and hopefully more than that, maybe tripling. I'd like to say quadrupling as well, but anyway, that's across European marketplaces around about 300,000. Um, so then of course, getting to the big source of income for me personally, uh, which is Amazon US and we did around about point million dollars over the last 12 months just on Amazon US alone. Um, I'm gonna break these revenue numbers down, by the way, using Shopkeeper, which is this software here. And I highly, highly recommend if you're looking for a way to track your business profits, not just revenue, but profits, and actually understand with a really great breakdown um, of, of where your money's coming from and where it's going to as well, so you're all your expenses, I highly recommend Shopkeeper. You can get a two month free trial if you check the link down below. Uh, go sign up, check it out, like use it for 60 days without paying anything, um, but you'll be hooked on it once you use it. So anyway, I'm getting all of the figures out of my Shopkeeper account and putting them into, into this spreadsheet for you. Um, so that's Amazon US. And so in total, total revenue then for my Amazon business, two and a half million dollars. Um, is that a lot? Is that not much? <laughs> it's definitely a lot more than I ever expected to ever do selling online. Uh, so that's really good. This is again in one year. This is gonna go up significantly. Um, I'm super, super bullish on Amazon going into the rest of this year, going into next year, and with all the crazy stuff that's happened over the last couple of months, I, I cannot say that, I can't say how much more confident I am in this business model going forwards than I was even three months ago. And three months ago, I was pretty bullish on Amazon. So two and a half million, give or take a bit, uh, over the last 12 months. Where, where do I think I can take this? I mean, honestly, my goal is for it to have an eight figure business. So $10 million per year. Uh, I'd like to get it to that stage and, and then probably sell it to be honest, but two and a half million, I'm, I'm pretty stoked with that. But that's revenue, right? That's revenue. It doesn't mean that I made anywhere near that amount of money. I could have lost, uh, you know, I could have lost lots of money doing this, 
depending on expenses and fees. So that's what I wanna talk about now, expenses. So what are our expenses? Amazon fees, again, I'm getting this, this is all coming straight from Shopkeeper. Uh, we actually paid, of the two and a half million that we made across those marketplaces, we actually paid Amazon 927,000. So what does that consist of? Uh, that's Amazon fees total. That is referral fees, that's FBA fees, monthly storage fees, and I don't even know what disposal fees are, I guess um, excess storage units. Referral fees is the 15% normally that you pay on each item that you sell. So that's basically a fee where, um, let's say, you know, Amazon brings you the traffic, you get the sale. So Amazon takes 15% of the sale because they're the ones bringing Amazon customers to your listing. So that's that. Again, I'm happy to pay that. FBA fees, so that's actually because we're using the FBA platform. That means that we're using, it's hands off basically. I don't have to do anything. I've never seen these products myself um, and, and I don't plan to. I sit back and then I just send the goods from China into Amazon, into an FBA warehouse. They do the storage of the goods. They then fulfill the goods to the customer. They manage returns, they manage all of that sort of stuff. And so I pay the FBA fees as a privilege of having that, of having access to that service. Storage fees, not really significant. So we pay a couple of percent maybe of our revenue goes to storage fees. And that's again, another thing that I'm super happy to pay because if you don't pay it, you're, you're gonna run out of stock, right? So you're gonna run out of stock because you're trying to save on fees. And then as soon as you run out of stock, you stop making the money. We wouldn't have made two and a half million if we'd spent any time out of stock. Um, so yeah, storage fees, referral fees, FBA fees, all go into this Amazon total fees. So yeah, thanks Jeff Bezos, I guess. And, and thanks for taking my 900,000. Next, um, next cost is unit and shipping costs or cost of goods sold or COGS. And so for that, that's the money that we basically paid to our freight forwarders, uh, to customs, to our supplier obviously as well for the actual unit and product costs. So that's around about 660, 670,000. So it's a lot of money, but again, you gotta spend some money to make some money. Uh, what else, PPC, so this is a really big one. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of Amazon businesses end up not making any money and it doesn't matter how much they take in, it could be $3 million, it could be $5 million, it could be $100,000 and then they all of that money or a lot of that money goes back to PPC costs and that stands for, SP stands for sponsored products I believe. All that money goes back into to spending money on ads basically and so a lot of businesses don't take anything home. In our case, uh, our PPC costs are easily within sort of benchmark or within KPI. Expect to pay seven to 10% of your total revenue back on PPC. And if I do the maths here, let's go that on total revenue and change it to a percentage, 7.4%. So we're good in terms of PPC costs. Again, seven to 10% is what you should be spending. Uh, PPC cost as percentage of total revenue. And for us, that's fine. So that allows us to effectively, the other metrics that go into that would be your ACOS. So we run at an ACOS of around about 20, 25%. And that will also be around about 25% of our total sales driven by PPC. I have the, the best tutorial on YouTube about PPC. So you can go and check that out. It'll be up here if you want to. Uh, if you want to understand how that works and why you want to be spending this amount of money on PPC, you don't want to stop because it's going to give you ranking. Um, it's gonna give you more exposure. It's gonna help that product get to the top and be seen, um, get to the top and then get the organic ranking so that you get organic sales. So if we weren't driving this amount of traffic or if we weren't spending 181,000, this would go down by a lot more than 181,000. So for us, it's worked out very well. Next cost, VAT. So that just goes back to Amazon UK. Um, so that's 20% of total sales and you can do the math. So that'll be about 20%. Next, other miscellaneous expenses. So what is that? That is other just miscellaneous stuff. It's this stuff. So just miscellaneous crap, basically. It doesn't really matter, but we paid four grand in miscellaneous stuff to Amazon uh, for doing stuff. And then we got actually got 35 or nearly $36,000 back from Amazon in terms of reimbursement. So this is absolutely key. The one, the best way that you can get these reimbursements, and so this is a negative expense, by the way. So this is money that we got back. We didn't pay this money out to Amazon. Amazon paid us nearly $36,000. Um, the way that you wanna get that or the way that you can get these reimbursements is probably using Helium 10 is the best way. So if you wanna go and check out in the description down below, I'll give you a discounted first month or lifetime discount to Helium 10. Use the Refund Genie, which is a tool that they have so you can actually work out how much money Amazon owes you and then get that money back. And so for us, in our case, it was $36,000. Generally, that comes through shipments where you ship in 
let's say you ship in 100 units into Amazon and Amazon loses or misplaces or breaks or damages some of those units, um, they basically make you whole so that because you shipped in 100 units, you should effectively make as much money as if you had had those 100 units made available. Just when Amazon damages and, and breaks your stuff, basically they pay you back, but they actually pay you for the, the, the final sale value. So you're actually making those units um, if you're gonna sell them at, you know, let's say $50, then it's effectively like selling them for $50. So you, you don't lose anything out when that happens. Operating expenses. So, I mean, this is a, this is a decent sized business, right? Two and a half million dollars per year, and it's growing quickly at this stage as well. Um, obviously, this is not me doing all of this, right? And the, the great thing about Amazon is that it's a scalable business model. I made $2.4 million in revenue over the last 12 months. Uh, I, I didn't set foot in the US, I did not that much work and I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit in this video as well. Um, but I still had to have a few people and a, and a team around me to get this stuff, stuff done, to manage things as they come up, to help me launch new products, um, do product research, basically everything in this Amazon business process, right? So that's operating expenses, um, or at least the bulk of operating expenses go to paying people. So I have an outsourced team all around the world. We don't, you don't, we don't have an office or anything. Um, and that totals to about $150,000. It includes a bunch of things. So the other things that go into operating expenses are things like bank fees. So getting money from Amazon, let's say paying Chinese suppliers or just paying fees around the world. Uh, there are bank fees associated with that. Um, so that's some component. Consulting and accounting is things like for, for our UK um, business, then we have uh, you know accountants and they do that sort of work for us. Also in our company taxes, all of that sort of stuff that goes into those fees. Outsource services, like I said, is the big one. So that's paying my team to do stuff for me. Third party storage fees. So around Q4, uh, I think it was only around Q4, we actually had some goods stored outside of Amazon's FBA warehouses and we had them stored with another third party. And so that's what third party storage is, just because we wanted to save a bit of money and you know we had a lot of stock, we didn't want to ship it all into FBA. So we wanted to keep it somewhere else. So that's that. And software subscriptions. That's not a big expense. The, the beauty of both of these business models, which I'll talk about, but the beauty of Amazon specifically is that you don't need much overhead. There really isn't much. Most of this is people that if I wasn't paying them, I would just do the work myself. Um, but the vast majority of that is, is paying people. And so software, you know, you need Helium 10 or you need Jungle Scout or a software like that. You need Shopkeeper, which again, you can get for free for two months. So get that if you're, if you're interested in that. Uh, what other software, accounting software, zero. It, it's, it really just doesn't add up to being significant in the grand scheme of things. Anyway, in total, around about $150,000 in operating expenses. So that brings a total expenses of nearly $2 million, $1.9 million out of that $2.4 million in revenue. A couple of things, you might think that's a huge amount of money to pay. You might be looking at that, you know, the amount of money that we paid Amazon and thinking that's just crazy, but that is not a good mindset to take into this. This is a highly scalable business model. You wanna pay that money. And, and here's another thing, Amazon's fees, most of these fees are only paid when you make the sale. So if you don't make the sale because you don't make the money, you don't pay the fee. And that's another beautiful thing here is like it looks like you need so much money invested into this business, for example, because I had to pay $900,000 out, right? But when you think about how the fee structure works, that's not actually my money. That was never my money. That money came directly from the customer at the point of sale and went straight to Amazon. So although it's an expense for me accounting wise, I didn't actually need to front much of that money at all. Very little of that money. Um, I did need to front COGS, obviously your unit costs because you pay that to the supplier, but this, it doesn't require working capital or anything. So this business model becomes highly scalable because of that. Um, that's just one point that a lot of people aren't clear on. But again, I'm giving you a breakdown into what a real Amazon business looks like. And, and most people won't talk about this stuff because they're not selling on Amazon or they're not doing it at a high level anyway. Anyway, these are the expenses, total expenses, 1.9 million. What does that leave me with? That leaves me with a net profit of around about, let's say, call it a nice even $500,000. Um, I'm pretty stoked with that. <laughs> uh, Things have definitely changed for me over the last couple of years. This number has gone up and up and up. Actually, over the last year or so, I posted this same video, but about a year and a half ago, and I'll leave a link at the top if you wanna go and check that out and see my progression over time. That number was about, I think it was about $400,000 the last time I made this video. So my net profit in the last 12 months, that's gone up by $100,000. It's gonna go up a lot more over the next 12 months, I believe. Like I said, my target right now is to get from two and a half million dollars to 
a $10 million a year business. So that is gonna go up and we've got a plan to get there as well. So yeah, watch this space, I guess. But anyway, um, that's my net profit for my Amazon business. Here's the most important thing that, again, most people who aren't doing this or aren't doing this significantly at a good professional level, they don't think about this stuff or they don't know about this stuff, so they don't talk about it. But what matters at the end of the day is not how much money I made and not how much money I took home. What matters is how much of my life did I actually have to sacrifice to make that money? How many hours did I have to work? Is this a full-time job? Am I working 100 hours a week, um, you know, driving myself to the bone to, to make this money? If that was the case, honestly, I wouldn't be so happy about this number because to me, money is important. Financial freedom is important. I, I wanna be financially independent. I wanna have the money to do the things that I wanna do, to travel around the world, to help my family, to help people that, that need help. But I don't wanna to sacrifice too much, of my life, too much of my life to be able to do that. I wanna have a good work-life balance. I don't mind working to do this, to sustain this income, obviously, but I want it to be at a reasonable level. So how much did I actually work over the last 12 months to make $500,000? Um, luckily, I track this stuff to the minute, literally to the minute, and I use, and you can see I'm actually tracking this right now, and it should say filming, not planning, so I need to update that. Uh, but this is what I did for my Amazon business. Let's go there. These are my hours, 330 over the last 12 months. And it's kind of hard to see this, but basically most of last year I was working about, let's say that's 11, let's say 15, 16 hours a month. So that's about the four hour work week. Uh, these last three months, honestly, when coronavirus happened, I did spend a lot of time. So like it was an hour a day actually thinking about what this all means. I was thinking about well, you know, what's gonna happen to Amazon, what's gonna happen to my business? Uh, do I need to pivot? Do I need to you know, control the risks or anything? So the hours that I was working went up a lot, they doubled. Um, but at the end of the day, I worked 300 hours in a year to make $500,000. So what does that look like in an hourly income, which again is the sort of key metric that I work off is how much is my time worth? And for me, it's about $1,500 an hour at the moment for my Amazon business. And this obviously is going up over time as this business continues to grow and as I continue to scale it, that will also go up significantly as I grow the business. and. The, the other thing that I haven't mentioned so far is that this revenue, this income level, you know, this may be mind boggling to you, this may be very average to you, depending on what background you're coming from. I know a lot of people watching this channel um, have business experience, and so this is a very reasonable number. But the, the, I guess the real benefit of this and why I see that like my time is now worth thousands of dollars per hour, and, and I can't really, it's hard for me to do things that I think are worth less than that, and I, have a, I set a very high bar for that. Because not only am I earning this money, not only did I earn around about $500,000 last year working less than an hour a day, um, but this is actually, I'm building an asset for myself. I'm not just building an income stream. And this is the, the, one of the key things that people don't get um, is that this is a business. It's a real business it, because it's scalable, because you can get people to do the work again. You can you know, pay operating expenses, pay an outsource team to do this stuff for you. And then you can not kick back and be completely passive, but be a real business owner instead of just the worker and still earn a lot of money, this business is sellable. So we can actually sell this business um, for a multiple of what this net profit number is. And that to me is just absolutely key to think about. If you wanna know more about that concept, if that again is something that most gurus haven't told you that this is an asset that you're building and, and therefore that the, the real life changing payoff is later on, it's not in the first six months, it's not even in the first year, it's after two, three years um, where you can really change your life. If that concept sounds interesting to you, go and check out the, the free training video that I have down below. Um, it is gonna lead to a call with me if you, if you qualify, but I do talk about how this works. Why is this a business model that you can actually build something into and then sell later on and why that's the real payoff. Again, anyway, like I just get frustrated that people don't talk about this stuff because there's so much potential here and I'm so bullish on it. And like, if there were less fake gurus being scammy about it, I think more of you would probably realize and accept that this is, a real valid opportunity. I guess that's my, my point in short. Anyway, this is, that's it. That's how much I made my Amazon business, 500,000. I worked a bit less than an hour a day on that. Um, it's gonna go up, <laughs> watch this space. I'll probably do another video in a year's time and you'll see this go up significantly. I'm super pumped about Amazon. Everything that has happened in the last couple of months has only made me more pumped on Amazon. Quick cut, as I was going through this video, I thought the numbers didn't look quite right. <laughs> I realized I made a mistake. I actually included the costs for, for across my whole business, but I only included the revenue, uh, or I, I rather, I forgot to include Amazon Europe. So that revenue goes up a bit. 
um, which means the net profit goes up to 546,000. I thought it looked a bit off. I thought it was a bit lower than it should have been. Um, but yeah, back to the video. And that's it guys. That's, uh, I'm, I'm being as real as I can with you. I'm gonna hide that now. And we're gonna talk about what you may have come here for, which is the guru side. I'm an Amazon guru. I have a YouTube channel. I sell courses, I do training. What does that look like? So let's get into potentially yeah, the, the meat of it. And let's start with revenues. So how much did I make doing YouTube, selling courses, training people to do stuff to sell on Amazon? I actually split this up a bit differently because there are more passive income sources and there are more active income sources. So I'm gonna talk about the passive income first and don't don't get be triggered by that word. I know passive income doesn't really exist in the in the you know like idealistic sense, but this is more passive income where if I don't do anything today or if I don't do anything in the next month or so, I'm still gonna earn that money, right? So that's all it means. I know that if I just stopped working, if I just left this for a year, uh, the passive income would also go down, but it's pretty passive in that I don't have to do it today or this week or this month or next month. So the first passive income source is ads. So that's YouTube ads on this channel. Um, so you can probably see this and if you can't, no, I'm not gonna bring it up, but you know what I mean? It's where the gurus hit you with their own, you know, their, their fake guru Lamborghini stuff. So I make money when they do that and because they make a lot of money scamming people or getting people to buy courses, uh, I actually get a decent kickback on that too. So in the last 12 months, I made $33,000, $32,000 doing that. I will, I'll open this up and show you what it looks like. Do, 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 do. This is my channel here. I hope I can show you this, whatever. Um, so that's my estimated revenue over the last 12 months, right? And it's actually gone down significantly. So my channel, I put a lot less effort into it and I'll talk about that in a sec. For the start of this year, basically the first four months of this year, I really wasn't doing much and I, I could see the pain that I felt because of that. Uh, but yeah, 32,000 in ad revenue. Next income source is affiliates. So how much did I make there? Um, how much did I make? $27,000. I don't focus on this income source at all and that's why I was like, oh, how much money did I make? It just, it's like this nice passive income source where it, you know, I recommend tools and software that I really use, that I really like. Um, I give you guys a discount and let me bring that up as well. So the way my affiliate income works is basically I recommend tools and services and, and things that I really use and get benefits from, exactly like Shopkeeper, which I mentioned in this video, like Helium 10 as well. And when, if you sign up through those links, then I actually get a kickback because of that. And here's how it looks, just so you're absolutely clear. This is one of my YouTube videos. But in the description, so I'll talk about some of these things and I'll go and be like, hey, go click the link down below. And then down below, you can see where I have the links. And normally you get a discount, so you get something. And then when you click that and you register, I actually get something as well. So that's that. And uh, this is, you know, this is just one of my income sources through affiliate earnings. I have quite a few, um, but again, they're, they're passive. I don't worry about them. I don't take like special deals or anything um, because it's just not that much money compared to everything else that I'm earning. But it's still, uh, it's not insignificant. I earned $27,000 from affiliates in the last 12 months. What's the next source? Uh, there is no next source. So total passive income was $60,000. So that's ads and affiliate earnings. And I mean, this is pretty crazy. Like if I were to look back four years ago and, <laughs> and like I could tell myself that in four years time, I'd have this YouTube channel where I could just earn $60,000 US passively and, and just, you know, have that as an income source where like that's effectively two or three times what I ever actually expected to make online when I just wanted to go around and travel the world. And now that's my smallest income source. So it's absolutely mind blowing, really it is. Um, and yeah, it's just a nice, it's a nice add on to have. Uh, anyway, that's passive income. So expenses now, how much did I actually have to expend to make this money and also my active income through the YouTube side and the course side? So the first expense is a VA. So there's obviously like, I, I do most of this stuff myself. I'm changing that now. Um, but over the last 12 months, I paid $5,000 to my VA to help me out. She's great. She does lots of stuff for me, makes my life easier. I want this number to go up a lot because I want to do less stuff going forwards. And I really just want to focus on the things that matter, which is, which is creating great content, which is helping my students, um, which is delivering strategies and delivering value and really helping people to make changes in their Amazon business or to start their Amazon business. So obviously, you know, you need to hire out, you need to get other people to do stuff for you, the, the low value work. So that number will go up, but over the last 12 months, $5,000 more, uh, more or less. Now software, the great thing about doing this is that it, just like Amazon, it's highly scalable where your costs don't go up very much. There are some costs associated with 
starting a YouTube channel, having a course, uh, you know, doing the stuff that I do, but it's very low. Um, so that's things like ClickFunnels, Zapier, the course platform that I use, ManyChat to, to use Facebook Messenger, um, software to edit videos, all of that adds up to a couple of thousand dollars. So it's really, it's really quite insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Ads. So this is a big one for, for a lot of gurus. How much do you spend on Facebook ads or on YouTube ads? How much do you actually have to spend to make the money that you get through courses to then go and buy your Lamborghini or whatever? Uh, people, some guys spend millions. Some guys and girls spend millions of dollars on ads. Uh, I spent zero last year actually, which again, I want this number to go up because that's not an efficient way of doing things. But fact is I uh, didn't run any ads last year. I did this whole thing very quite passively last year. I was sailing around the, uh, around the Caribbean last year as well. So this was all more of a, I don't know how I'd call it, not a, not a side hobby. It was something that I was committed to and, and am committed to, but I guess it was lower down on my priority list. So I didn't really want to scale anything last year. So that's why no spend on ads. Um, and then training courses. So this is an expense. So I'm a guru. I sell people courses. I get people to join my training program. I teach them how to start an Amazon business. But do I actually pay money for courses? Uh, if you'd asked me this question two or three years ago, I would have said, no, I don't buy any courses. Um, I like to do things and go it alone and just learn and, and <laughs> spend the money and spend the time doing things by myself. As I'm making more money, as I'm becoming more experienced with online business, with my Amazon business, with, with this side as well, I'm realizing that training, the right training from the right person about the right thing that's, that's, that's a pain point for you, that's gonna make a change in your life, particularly if it's got a financial outcome, the ROI on good training is just insane. It's just crazy. Like if you put, let's say $5,000 into an Amazon FBA product to get that money back, let's say you invest the money, you, you pay the supplier, they ship it, then you launch it, then you've got to do some marketing. You might get that money back in, let's say three months, right? Around about that, it can vary a lot, but let's say three months. If you invest in the right training, you can get delivered that training same day, you can start same day, you can make changes same day, and you can literally make that money back that same day, it's just insane. So anyway, I had not spent anything on training when I started, and that's a common question. I actually started my Amazon business by myself. However, now that I'm a bit smarter and I've done this more, I have actually started to spend money on training. So the first, I bought one course, it was $1,000, and then more recently, I bought another course that was around about $6,000, um, give or take. I'm gonna spend exponentially on training going forwards, because I now can see that, again, if you pick the right, mentor that you pick the right coach um it just it just pays off it just makes sense it's like if you're trying to make money through amazon or through whatever other business model or whatever it is you're trying to do and it's going to cost you let's say two thousand dollars or it's going to cost you five thousand dollars but you're going to make mistakes make less mistakes or do something faster like hmm, no brainer so anyway that number i want that to go up i'm i'm happy to spend i would spend twenty thousand dollars if i had an opportunity where i needed something i could see the training to solve that problem absolutely but in the last 12 months, I spent $7,000. Miscellaneous expenses, uh, what is that? I don't even know what that is. Graphics design, photos, a photo shoot. I did a photo shoot, uh, that was like a couple hundred bucks. Miscellaneous stuff. So those are the expenses um, that I paid to make firstly the income, the, the passive income, and then also the active income, which I will talk about now. So that's total expenses of $15,000. And you know, obviously that ratio is already pretty good. That say, what is that? 75% profit margin, something like that. But my main income source in terms of this YouTube side is not the passive income. And most of these expenses are not to make the passive income. Most of the expenses are to make my active income. And I'm, I call this active income because I spend time doing it. I work on this income source. So I don't expect this to be passive. I don't sit back and just let the money roll in. I actually work and put in time and effort for my course, my training program. That's the FBA Freedom Accelerator. And over the last 12 months, I made $292,000, more or less, more or less. I think that number is accurate. That's after fees, um, refunds, stuff like that. So that's how much I made doing that. I suppose I should probably say something about that since this is a guru video and, and whatnot, but I'm like, I was probably 80% sure that this was a good idea for me because I was making so much money on Amazon. And to be honest, making less money doing this than I'm making on Amazon. So I was, I was kind of doubting whether this is worth my effort. And I'm gonna talk about how much effort I put into this and, and that the return that I get from it um, in a second. But yeah, when I was sailing through the Caribbean last year and, and just really having a good time and kicking back and being a bit more disconnected, I did wonder quite often whether I should just stop doing this, get off YouTube, 
um, and just focus on Amazon, which is making me so much money and I wasn't having to work that much on it. And again, building the real asset. This business is not really an asset. Uh, if you stop doing it, you, your face is the, you know, your face is the face of the business, so therefore you can't really sell it. Um, so yeah, I, I had doubts about this because I know I'm making a lot less than most other gurus. I am I'm, I'm happy with that trade-off. I'm happy to put more effort into Amazon and make that my real main thing so that I know that again, like I said at the start of the video, so that I'm not BSing anyone, I'm not misleading anyone. What I say is what I truly believe and what I really do in the Amazon business. But what I was gonna say was, after this last couple of months, I've done a lot of reflection while I've been in quarantine, been in lockdown during COVID, and I've just come out the other side like 110% committed to this. This is such a, it's like between Amazon and other business models or other things that you could do in your life right now, you gotta pick the winning horse. And the fastest horse, the winning horse right now is Amazon. There's just no question about that. Um, it, I don't know if you guys are like seeing what's going on in the world right now, but this is a, a, a massive like lifetime shift where so many people are gonna get left behind. People in traditional jobs, people doing things that are just like the old way of doing things, gonna get left behind. The world hasn't caught up yet, but this is happening. People who are already selling on Amazon, we're seeing it now because we're seeing our sales are, are blowing up. We're seeing that relative to everything else, uh, it's just, it's going really well, at least for the vast majority of people, like in our personal experience, for our business, for the vast majority of my students, for the vast majority of people that I'm talking to, now's the time to be selling on Amazon, honestly. So anyway, I'm 110% committed to actually increasing this because I wanna get more people selling on Amazon and, and doing it the right way as well. And I, I truly believe that, not that I have an obligation to do this or anything, but like, I, I don't want people taking crappy fake courses from people who just don't know what they're talking about. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to do this and I, and I back it. And I mean, you're probably gonna see me, sell, you're probably gonna see me running ads, by the way. Zero dollars in ads over the last 12 months, that's probably gonna change. I truly believe in this program. Um, and I guess that leads me on to the next thing. How much work do I actually spend on it? So that's the active income, by the way. Um, so that makes my total income $350,000 through, I call this FDM2 or Freedom2, which is my second business. So that's a good number. Um, it's less than the Amazon side, obviously. What did I say that was? 500. So yeah, it's, it's not as much. Um, it's, it's a different type of business. It's a different type of work. The Amazon side is very much like analytical. I, I get uh, the value personally that I get out of my Amazon business is, I mean, the money's obviously great, but it's having the team and actually helping people to grow within my team and helping to support people as well. Uh, within that, Amazon business is just super meaningful for me. For this, for the YouTube side, it's it's helping my students, honestly. Like I love helping you guys too. If you know, if, if you're my students, then I love helping you. But uh, for subscribers as well. But the fact is that like you just can't, you can't, you can't deliver that value. You can't have, you can't build that relationship in a format like this. Like you're watching me, but I, I don't get to see you. So I've I've realized that it it's for me it's much more satisfying more and more to like be able to focus my time more on a smaller group of people to build a community and something that that's something that I really lacked. Anyway, the, the income's worth it for what I'm doing, absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna double down on that this year as well as growing the Amazon business faster than we've been growing it. So I made 350,000 uh, over the last 12 months doing that. The last thing I wanted to talk about is, oh, sorry, net profit, sorry, 337,000 hours worked, right? So I worked twice as much on this side of things, on my course, as I did on Amazon. And like, that kind of grates me a little bit in that like, I'm you know after passive income and after just living my personal life. But again, over the last couple of months, I've really realized how much more rewarding it is to actually just dive down and start like really like digging down and really helping people individually as well as, as, well as obviously building my knowledge into the, what I think is the best course on the market, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I've spent more hours doing it. So I earn less money per hour, $500 instead of 1500. Um, it's a lot less. It's a lot less valuable, actually, for me financially, because again, this five hundred thousand dollars in profit, I can then sell the business, and so that sale value is worth a multiple of that net profit. So all the hours that I work on my Amazon business, they're not actually paying me fifteen hundred an hour. They're actually paying me a lot, lot more than that because because there's a business sale at the end of it. Whereas for for YouTube for training, um, I don't get to sell anything at the end of it. So the I'm doing it for a lot less money, basically per hour that I work, but I enjoy it more. It's a more satisfying experience. And yeah, I get to change people's lives. So how can I complain? That will go up as well though, because I do plan to grow this. I am again, 110, 120% committed 
to this, to Amazon as a business model, growing my own business, and also teaching other people how to do it the right way. So, I mean, that's it guys. Uh, you've seen now, you know what it looks like to really sell on Amazon at a pretty high level. You know what the expenses look like. Um, you've seen that, you know, it's not just a high level number of great, two million or whatever people will, will spout out. It's really about what you take home at the end of the day. You've seen what that is for a business that's, that's doing it pretty well. We're doing things. I, I'd like to think we've got a pretty good handle on you know, the business model. And you've also seen what it looks like to be a real guru instead of a fake guru. And at the end of the day, I just hope that this, hope that this gives you a sense of transparency and, and if nothing else, a sense of hope and justification. If you've been looking at the Amazon side of things and let's say you've been thinking, you've been thinking about doing it, but you've just been seeing all these fake gurus again on the ads, just know that it's possible, right? Just know that it's possible and that there are also, there are people like me and there are other people out there as well. I'm not saying I'm the only one. There are people who are doing this successfully and teaching people how to do it successfully as well. And most of the time, those people like myself, you'll see these kinds of numbers where they're you know, good but realistic money on Amazon and good but realistic money teaching how to do it as well. Um, it's the ones who are flashing the stuff everywhere, the ones who have the Ferraris, the ones who have the mansions, the ones who, again, watch out for these like sort of trigger phrases where it's like, oh, I, I started with Amazon and I was broke and then in a very short period of time, I became a millionaire almost always they are lying to you and they actually became a millionaire through selling courses. And there's nothing wrong with being a millionaire through selling courses. It's just that if you're misleading people and thinking that the money came from Amazon and then that's why people are buying the course, that's scammy shit and I don't like that. So I hope that this has given you a better idea of what it can look like. Um, if this was your first time on the channel or you haven't subscribed, make sure to do that right now. If you're still here listening to me babble on about money and about you know <laughs> scams and, and being authentic and being transparent, if you're still here listening to this now, give me a thumbs up, give the video a like, that would really help the video get shown to more people. It helps me get the message out uh, and it helps me do more videos like this basically. So really appreciate you watching this video. If you wanna get training from the training side, again, I am doubling down on both of my businesses. So both of these are gonna be growing and blowing up and getting a lot better and a lot more valuable um, and, and delivering a lot more value to our customers in both businesses this year in 2020. So if you wanna get on board with me, go and check out the free training video in the link down below um, and you'll get to know what the process is like from there. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.